For a big part of the 2000s, the demand for a Fast and Furious video game, well, was covered by the Need for Speed franchise. Both series had a big emphasis on illegal street racing and car modifications. And as time went on, when one started focusing on big set pieces and exotic cars, so did the other. But while in the last few years, Need for Speed has been trying to go back to his modding focused street racing era that its fans clam for. While Fast and the Furious has only kept on pushing the craziness and absurdity, for better and for worse. And nowadays, it seems easier to buy into the idea of a Fast and Furious game. So how does this one stack up? Crossroads was developed by Slightly Mad Studios, a developer that focuses on racing games. Famous for their current series, Project Cars, and they have in fact worked on a Need for Speed game in the Shift series. And this is where I have to be honest. I'm not a big racing sim or sim focused fan, so I'll say that my experience with this developer is very small and I have yet to play the Shift series, but given this game's focus on arcadey driving and action set pieces, this shouldn't really be a problem. Also, I'll be focusing on reviewing the single player content of this game. So, this game is arcadey, but how does it feel? And well, it's honestly quite like nothing I have played before. It feels like the car doesn't turn enough when you push all the way in the analog, no matter the speed. Drifting also feels really weird. It isn't helpful to make corners in an arcadey way, but it's also not realistic, so there really doesn't seem to be much reason to use the drift mechanic in this game. So, given what I said so far, you would think that this would be the type of arcade racing where you still have to use your brakes. And whilst that might be true, realistically, this is not a racing game with a lot of curves. This game only has one traditional race, with laps and a normal winning condition of coming in first place. Most of the game is compromised of set pieces that take place in mostly straight roads. And these set pieces vary from being really boring and really exciting. A lot of the more exciting missions have you do similar stunts to the ones in the movies, like hijacking a truck at high speed, kinda like in the first movie. Another scene has you dragging a giant ball around with surprising level of control by the player, very reminiscent of the Fast Five movie scene where they drag a safe around. The thing bogging down these missions is the somewhat scripted events, but Mostly the overall clunkiness of the game. While the game is not hard, the AI can feel very overly aggressive. And that, added up with what already feels like a hindered driving experience, takes a lot of the fun away from the experience. There are also power-up, kinda like Mario Kart. They're not random, but they work in a similar way, mostly used to go faster and take other cars down. And later on, take bosses down. Yes, there are bosses, and they're actually pretty cool. They add some variety and spectacle, but above that, they have destructible parts that actually affect the boss's abilities. You can knock down a missile launcher from the boss, and he can't use it anymore. I don't know, but to me, that's pretty cool. There is also a character-changing ability, but never gets used in any interesting way. When it's required to be used, it's very scripted, and when it's just free for the player to use, there's no real reason to do it. Again, another feature of this game that's janky and half-assed in some way. But then we have the more boring missions, where you're forced to drive slowly or slow cars and just consume expository dialogue, which takes me to talk about the story. I'll be honest, I don't care for the Fast and Furious story. That's not why I watch these movies. I'm there for the overtop action, 
not so much they're kind of dumb stories in fact my favorite fast movies are the ones with the more stupid storylines like fast in the furious tokyo drift and this game is no different we focus on a new cast of characters probably because they didn't have the budget to put the original cast in more than a few choice scenes and i just didn't care for the characters troubles but as it does divulge into insanity which would make me more interested at some point we even find out the villain is peter stormare who they got the, for this game somehow the problem is cutscenes go on for so long and it's not like they have anything important to say they just waste your time a lot for example early on in this game the main characters are trying to figure out what they're going to do so they start brainstorming and the first idea they go no we can't do that then they make up a bunch of other dumb ideas for what feels like an eternity only to go with the first idea they say couldn't be done it's really jarring for reference this game has an hour of cutscenes and the whole game is less than four hours so i hope that can put it in a better perspective for you the viewer moving on to the graphics there's no way around this one it's not good it legitimately feels like a ps3 game with some more modern effects mixed in like the lighting but characters in specific look really out of their time it doesn't help that the game goes for a realistic look now is this a problem you can overlook sure it's ugly but it doesn't hurt your eyes ugly it just makes it feel old even though it came out in 2020 music wise something i've been somewhat neglecting talking about in my game review so far unfortunately this one is definitely not the best one to start on fast and the furious is famous for its soundtrack mostly comprised of pop ballads and brazilian funk which are basically also pop ballads here though it's mostly generic electronic music and has a tendency to go very unnoticed due to the constant talking of the characters overall it's not bad enough that i noticed but it's not good either one quirk i would like to point out with this game is in the beginning of the game in the barcelona area it really seemed the game was going for an open world vibe as a lot of the tracks aren't really racing tracks of course because of how this game works but also they crossed and overlapped with each other this is just me speculating but early on in development there might have been an idea to make this an open world game of sorts but regardless given everything i've said so far about this game you can probably tell that this was a rushed and underdeveloped probably underfunded video game it's full of nice and fun ideas but all of them suffer from the same sort of jank and lack of polish that stops this from being an enjoyable, overall enjoyable experience. And for me, there is no way around the really convoluted story. Now, should you play this game? Well, at full price? Never, absolutely not. This is terribly unpolished, 4 hours and the multiplayer is already dead. But if you could get this for 15, maybe less, then suddenly it could be a fun, dumb afternoon. Just be ready to put up with unskippable cutscenes. And that is it for another review. Uh, I'm sorry guys, it's been kinda hard to review recently. I, um, I've been sick and sitting down and writing has been really hard for me. Um, recording audio isn't too bad I still get a bit kind of nauseated but it's fine regardless uh, I, ha I thank you for watching I hope you will subscribe for more videos if you can if you can't that's fine please like and comment that's also appreciated and um, hopefully I'll see you in the next one also no it's not that disease thankfully <laughs>